morning and welcome back to the fourth and final part of our Adventurers Club conversion of the 2021 LEGO Modular Building at the Police Station. As you can see here from the front, well, it doesn't look any different, but not only do we have some very exciting aspects of the build to take a look at today, but I've designed a full roster of custom minifigures, which if more prints existed, I would love to ideally see in a set of this conversion. So that will be a bit of fun for us later on. But first, let us take a look at the work I did today for the roofs. Now, as for the roofs in their own nature, nothing much about them in particular did actually change. But you can see a couple of things down on this smaller roof here. I left the initial water tower in place. I added this little spy camera robot here, and we'll get to why for the storyline later. There are also these cardboard boxes and a flag, which is actually a disguised phone tapping wire as just in the window here, you can see the telephone on the desk from last week's episode. And that wire runs all the way down to that flagpole there, and that's how they are tapping in on Johnny Thunder's conversations, and we'll get to why later. Then up here on the main roof, we have a selection of different artifacts, and they may all look a bit random, but let me walk them through with you here. Over here in the back corner, we have an Anubis head in this box here, some printed 2x3s from Pharaoh's Quest, another twin printed or stickered 2x4 from Pharaoh's Quest, uh, a large column from the Aztec line of adventurers, um, it's on the screen now, a hieroglyphics column from Pharaoh's Quest or early original adventurers, this arch piece, which is actually a carving from uh, the Scorpion Palace Orient Expedition set. Some crystals, mainly from Rock Raiders, but I suppose this could also be Power Miners. And in this box over here, there would be one of the other rock monsters from Power Miners. You know, the little glowy red and blue ones. But that finishes up the roof. However, there is one more section that we need to take a look at today. And that one was down here on the ground floor, which I said I would leave for last week, mainly because I hadn't come up with a use for it yet. But because this is an adventurer's club, I have decided that this building here is a bureau dish change. And for those of you who don't know, this is a currency converting store. You can see the little five pence piece and the $100 bill up here at the top, as well as some more money down here. And these would be the rates written down here. So... Um, euros to pounds, uh, studs to bricks and, and other stuff like that. And you've also got a little cash register down here that would have a print on it. But that is going to conclude it for the actual build segment. And now I need to tell you about the story and how that links in with some of the stuff that I've just shown you. So let's go and take a look at those figures and then I'll tell you the story. So starting off our figure selection today. So starting off our figure selection today, we of course have the eponymous Johnny Thunder from the Adventurers line. And here he is seen in his CMF Series 19 version, and that is just the normal one found in that blind bag, even with the chameleon. But on the right, you can see that compared to the original 1999 version here. I mean, you could use that one realistically, but I think I prefer the updated version, and he was the catalyst for this design. But on his right is a child that a lot of you won't recognise, but this is actually a younger version of um, Jake Rain from Pharaoh's Quest, and you can see he's wearing the same aviator jacket that must have been given to him when he was little. And the idea behind including this character is upon his visit to his uncle's or father's workplace, uh, being the nephew or something of Johnny Thunder, very similar to what was actually the case in Pharaoh's Quest, um, he was inspired to start his adventuring career here and revisit his uncle's first place of adventure. And that is why he is here. He is here being inspired as a young child, using Jay's hair in black, some mid legs with some printing, and as I mentioned earlier, the same aviator jacket, just with less markings from when he was a young child. But moving on, of course, if we have Johnny Thunder, we could not get away without uh, Miss Gail Storm and Dr. Charles Lightning. And they're here in slightly updated versions from their original appearances, particularly with Dr. Charles Lightning. I chose to not give him his backpack, as obviously they are at home doing their research phase right now. He has some nice jewel molded legs in dark green and dark brown. 
and a very subtle swirling pattern on his shirt just to bring that detail more in line with what Lego would do nowadays. The beard is also a lot less thick as this is slightly younger than the one in the picture. I'm not quite sure why because they've been on all the same adventurers. Maybe he's just a bit more well kept here or maybe the adventurers universe was all some sort of parallel universe. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, we also have Miss Gale Storm, who is using a hairpiece which I had to try and pick, considering her reference material has never actually worn any hair at all. The only hair we've ever seen of her is brown and down the side of her hair like that. So I gave her this curly hairpiece, um, some jewel molded legs with some brown and red, and a more of a cardigan and a, an adventurous shirt underneath. And I think this one came out really well. I'm actually really pleased with this one. Um, so yeah, and these guys... I didn't mention this with the Johnny Thunder one, but they were, and these guys are all in the top floor office, is the, the background there. Uh, but here, on the ground floor entrance, we have the employees of the club, and here we can see a barkeeper and a butler. And the barkeeper is obviously a new employed member, looking a bit younger there with the stubble and that giant comb over, in a tan uniform for behind the bar, with some non dual molded legs and some very simple arms. The barkeep looks suitably, the butler looks suitably posh there with that very thin moustache, possibly almost styled after Johnny Thunder himself. And if you look very closely on his head, you can see a scar uh, just um, just above his eye. And that is there to hint at some sort of interesting past where maybe this butler came on an adventure or had a life outside of being a butler. But one other thing to note about this figure pair is that this newly hired barkeep hasn't had his background checked. And he is actually a spy on the inside for the Stud Gang, which is the gang that robbed the brick bank, the gang that's cooking cookies in the detective's office, and the gang that is spying on Johnny Thunder for their mysterious boss, Fat Baron Von Baron. And he has hired them to not only make a little money on the side, but to find out what Johnny Thunder's up to. And you can see here that the barkeeper is reporting back to this um, stud gang member on the small roof here where he has been spying and tapping into the wire in the office listening to the phone calls and just watching him with those binoculars in the box and you can see here that he's using the Han Solo hair in a dark tan with a hood piece from the Lego movie there as well as some very simple legs and a non-suspicious at all tracksuit. So they are taking a closer look at what Johnny Thunder's up to, and I'll tell you what Johnny Thunder is up to in just a minute. But before we get there, the clock would not be complete if we didn't have some other famous faces that are fairly well known throughout LEGO and adventuring across the years, and we've got some references for you guys here. So first up on the left, um, and these guys are all in the club, uh, we have Chief from the original Rock Raiders here, and the challenge I took to myself with all of these figures was not only updating them to a slightly more modern style but was taking elements of their design and turning them into casual clothes because a lot of these guys are in uniform out on their travels so we're starting off with chief here who has a military uniform on when he's not in his rock raider caves probably years and years of service um, and you can see that he's still got his teal arm there as this is after rock raiders in the timeline some simple legs as well and the uh, slick back hair uh, which is receding just like Venkman. Next up in the middle we have Dr. Rodney Rathbone from Monster Fighters and you can see him here in the same outfit as above just without the waistcoat on so that shirt has just been untucked for him to relax at the card tables and enjoy his time away from the Monster Fighters and all of his research. You can see I also updated the bowler hat to have some printing on it, as well as a slightly younger face print, as uh, this is still in the research phase for Monster Fighters, so they haven't actually found any Monster Fighters evidence. So you can see that this uh, set is sort of stuck in about 2009 or so, right around uh, the time of Ferris Quest and Monster Fighters and Atlantis. Then up on the right one again that you might not recognise that looks very similar to Johnny Thunder in his minifigure form. This is actually uh, a minifigure categorization of Hero Dino 006 and this is from uh, Dino 2010 and he isn't named so he's here. 
just wanted some representation. You can see he's wearing his same white shirt with a lot less of that in jungle equipment, some very simple jewel molded legs, and you can see his uh, neckerchief down on his belt as well. So another simple figure just filling out the club. And our last two seen here in the chop chop is Brain from both Pound Miners and Atlantis. Samantha Rhodes from Atlantis. So talking about brains first, you can see I have taken the Power Miner cover scheme and just slightly modified it to make it look a bit more casual. Again, having never seen him without hairs on, I chose the bold cap as the correct piece to use for him here. This is the same one used for Shakespeare in the Lego Movie 1 CMS series. You can see he's sort of got a grey undershirt on as well as his overalls which lead down to some plain blue trousers. His monocle is there looking slightly wonky but still very nice and there is no moustache to be present on this guy yet. Following up with Dr. Samantha Road from Atlantis, this is another one where we've never actually seen her face are in the actual TV show, so that's all I really had to go on. And I just took her accent colour of red and put that into some sort of shirt when she's off duty um, and doing her prep work for the mission, as Atlantis would be the next mission to depart from the Adventurers Club. But that is going to cut it for looking at all the characters. Now I just want to quickly tell you the rough story, and this is obviously not plot proof. But um, here we go. So the adventurers are prepping for a trip on a sea voyage to go and visit the islanders, another thing that they didn't actually ever visit. So this is similar in a sense to the jungle one, but this is islanders, so King Kahuka over in um, sort of Central America, uh, jungly but more tribal, so out on, out on the ocean. Maybe they could even link in with season 14 of Ninjago or something like that. Um, and... In this preparation stage, when they're prepping and cataloguing all of the finds in their previous uh, generations, Johnny Thunder brings his nephew, uh, young Jake Reigns, to his work, and he gets inspired. And, and there are people enjoying the club, um, sharing their adventures, planning for trips and stuff, you know, centre of reform club kind of life. And um, But Baron Von Baron, who is not in the set, has hired the stud gang, as I mentioned earlier, earlier, perpetrators of the Brick Bank heist and the cookie-eating uh, saga uh, to find out about the Rigo Ruby and where Johnny Thunder is heading next, as how could he steal the treasure from Johnny Thunder if he didn't know where they were going. Uh, so these hire these guys for infiltration, the, the phone is tapped, um, and you've obviously got that infiltrated barkeeper. So the question is, will he get to what he wants? You know there's that tunnel under the police station. Will he get the Rigu Ruby, who is in the treasure room? Will he be able to dig that tunnel in using his uh, hired uh, stud, stud gang member? And will the barkeep get the information so that Baron Von Baron can chase them down to the island? Well, that would be up to you in this kind of style set. Um, but that's, that's it. <laughs> I have nothing more to show you today but um i hope you enjoyed this four-part series talking about the adventurous club remock that i did out of the police station i really love what i was able to create and even with this opportunity to do minifigures as well i really think this one turned out great and i definitely prefer it to the police station with all of those lovely references to so many themes across the the 2010s and more recently as well which is really great to see so i hope you enjoyed this and there's at least something that you took away from this project if nothing else uh tell me which one of the figures is your favorite down below as well if you like the sort of storyline or any references from this week be sure to go and watch the other parts if you haven't seen them they're much more interesting in this because the build is obviously the main focus but until then i'll see you next time goodbye <laughs>